Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Sipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Uh, Fourth of July week, Fourth of July weekend racing coming up. Where are we headed to uh, with Horse Center this week, Brian? Yeah, happy July 4th to everyone, Matt. Uh, Independence Day tomorrow. We're filming on Wednesday here. We're going to go to Indiana, Horseshoe. Indianapolis is the uh, the name of that racetrack these days. They have a couple graded stakes for three-year-olds, Matt, both on the male and female side. So we're going to start with the Indiana Derby. Sound good? Yep, let's go. Here we go. All right, Matt, the uh, field for the Indiana Derby, a $300,000 grade three, mile and 16th, which is actually race 12 on their Saturday afternoon card, has drawn a field of eight three-year-old males, Let's start at the rail out with number one, Woodcourt. Woodcourt is a horse I can't completely throw out, Matt. He won a couple in a row, uh, just hasn't really broken through his stakes races. His stakes races don't look good enough. Fourth in the Rebel, sixth in the Jeff Ruby, third in the Illinois Derby. I do like, uh, he, he's got a couple of nice workouts over the track. A am I crazy thinking this horse could surprise here? Um, I think you, those uh, adjectives that you just used might be appropriate. Uh, uh, yeah, you never know. Could surprise, but I agree with you, Brian. Uh, he, uh, when he has moved into Stakes Company as of late, he just has not run real well, particularly in that recent Illinois Derby. Yeah, that Illinois Derby was third, but it was a way back third. So Woodcourt, a, a deserving long shot, but one I can't completely throw out. Certainly can't throw out the two, Matt. N number two is Stronghold. Stronghold came into the Kentucky Derby about two months ago off wins in the Sunland Derby in New Mexico and the grade one Santa Anita Derby where he beat uh, a couple of good horses out in Santa Anita. He made a move in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, he beat two-thirds of the field as he faded back to seventh. Uh, Strongholds had, like I said, two months off. Now he's work, working really well for trainer Phil D'Amato out in California. This is the spot that they uh, picked to make his first start back since Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, um, and not only, you know, heading into that Kentucky Derby, uh, he had never finished worse than second in all of his races. And that seventh in the Kentucky Derby, you know, uh, uh, is just as good as some of those first and seconds that he had piled up heading into the run for the roses. Uh, yeah, uh, certainly in, in my eyes is the horse to beat. Yeah. And, and if we're looking at that morning line, uh, the morning line looks pretty favorable for stronghold there at seven to two. Um, certainly uh, well behind the favorite who we're going to talk about a little bit later nice odds on strongholds you know you never know what you're going to get with a horse coming out of the kentucky first time but i like the pattern here he's had two months off he's not been away too long he's not coming back too quickly and he really impressed his trainer in recent workouts in california so stronghold as you say a consistent son of go sapper um I think he's the horse to beat in this Indiana Derby as well, a tactical runner as well. Number three is Real Men Violin. Real Men Violin ended his two-year-old season on a promising note, second integrated stake at Churchill Downs. This year, though, eighth in the Risen Star, 11th in the Louisiana Derby, second in the Illinois Derby, third in the Texas Derby for trainer Kenny McPeak. Yeah, overall has only got one victory, and, and that was in his – made in special weight he does have five second place finishes in there another one that i think could get some of the comments that we uh made about uh woodcourt uh when it has been time to move into uh big bigger stakes races he just hasn't been able to get it done but he did finish second uh, in that Illinois Derby that we mentioned earlier and third in his most recent start uh in the Texas Derby um, maybe he can get a piece, but I, I don't think I like him on top. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you there, Matt. I, I can't pick him on top either, but uh, the last two give you hope, although he wasn't real close to the winner in either the Illinois or the Texas Derby. Real men violin for trainer Kenny McPeak. Uh, number four is Kitty Hawk, Matt. Uh, Kitty Hawk is a horse who 
uh, will uh, be looking to win at big odds here uh, for trainer Vicky Oliver, but but he does have good speed. Um, it's two starts in 2024. He finished last year with a win. It's two starts in 24, Allowance Company, both Keeneland Churchill Downs, uh, probably pretty good fields. He got to the lead and he faded out of it. Um, is he any more than a possible pace presence here in the Indiana Derby? Probably not. Another one in here that only has a maiden special weight victory in uh, in his record. You mentioned those allowance races, uh, got to the lead, set the pace, ended up fifth in both of them. Yeah, you know, those were in the in the good spring meetings at Churchill and at Keeneland. So yeah, they were probably good fields, but but still, Brian, this is a this is a pretty good field here. We're in stakes company, but yeah. Uh, uh, probably only a pace presence and if as we look at the time form u.s pace projector matt they are projecting a fast pace here in the indiana derby kitty hawk certainly part of it they're also talking about seven ej won the cup number eight dragoon guard the morning line favorite also sir grayland uh the number six and not too far out of it is the horse we already talked about stronghold although i think if the pace is real fast stronghold has the ability to come from off it just a little bit. So a fast pace projected here for the Indiana Derby. Uh, we're going to go back to the field, Matt. Uh, the number five horse is uh, informed Patriot. Steve Asmussen has this runner uh, going up and down of late. Uh, which informed Patriot are we going to see? Two starts back, beat decent horses in a stakes win at Oakland Park. That, of course, came in the bathhouse row. Uh, last time, though, he traveled down to Lone Star Park for the Texas Derby and informed Patriot really uh, uh, laid an egg there at Lone Star, Matt. Yeah, I think that up and down description is appropriate. Appropriate. Yeah, he did very little running in that in the Texas Derby when he finished fifth and and before the Bathhouse Row, he was fifth in the Arkansas Derby, fifth in the Summon Derby. Uh, some of these races show up in uh, competitors he'll face in the Indiana Derby who have run uh, much better as of late. Yeah, that clunker in the Texas Derby. Uh, 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 certainly doesn't have me uh, high on informed Patriot at, th at this point of his career. Yeah, well, you'll get some odds. In fact, I think he'll probably be higher than the six to one we're seeing on the morning line there out of Horseshoe, Indianapolis, because of how badly he ran in the Texas Derby. But there are some good performances, including a third uh watching freedom in, in the St. jones earliest theater not not bad performance went fifth in the arkansas derby um and, and that win in the bathhouse row again against decent horses so if he bounces back you might get some odds uh here in the indiana derby but it's it's hard to uh nail down and form patriot if you will number six we we mentioned with the speed in fact all the outside outside horses we mentioned with the expected fast pace here in the Indian Derby. Say great. Sir Grayland, a son of Spadester, trained by Grant Forster, Matt, is a horse of so promise. He's won two or three starts, and he was second in the other. Yeah, uh, um, his maiden victory came uh, for a, a $40,000 tag, and those recent races at Churchill Downs were in uh, various types of starter allowances, so yeah, he he has been a competitor and, and had good finishes, but I think we're making a significant move upward in terms of competition. Probably, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Matt makes a good point there, folks, in that uh, even allowance races were not open allowance races. Speed, never run a bad race but he's significantly moving up in class. One horse who's not significantly moving up in class, at least off the last couple races, is EJ won the cup. EJ won the cup, did a whole bunch of sprinting for trainer Doug O'Neill before he switched to two turns. Since he switched to two turns, Matt, this has been a pretty nice horse. Yeah, that's for sure. I guess EJ is a, a, a NHL hockey player in the cup, I guess, referring to the the Stanley Cup, yeah, uh, he was the winner of that Texas Derby that we have mentioned a couple times 
uh, uh, go. Uh, and and uh, in his recent start, that was a nice performance. Before that, he was third in the Santa Anita Derby, and that was behind uh, Stronghold, as we discussed earlier, and was also the winner of the Turf Paradise Derby. So uh, certainly a horse that has some good wins and is moving in the right direction. Yeah, he's moving in the right direction. Uh, since he's got a, a ride of ground, he's won three of his last four. I think the first two were light in competition, but the last two he moved up. Uh, Santa Anita Derby, he, he stu stuck around. Uh, certainly Stronghold uh, was better than him that day when he was third in the Santa Anita Derby, the grade one Santa Anita Derby, but it was good performance. He bounced right back. Uh, he's got a nice... Uh, amount of speed, but he doesn't, he's not speed crazy, doesn't need the lead. That win in the Texas Derby was a nice performance. Uh, certainly one of the uh, the top horses here in the Indiana Derby, one that you could easily bet. Mike Smith, uh, who's uh, who's close to my age, Matt, that's, that's old for a jockey. He'll be aboard. EJ won the cup again here in the Indiana Derby. Number eight is the red hot favorite. His name is Dragoon Guard, Matt. Uh, Dragoon Guard is trained by Brad Cox. He'll be ridden by Florent Giroux again. Eight to five on the morning line as he makes his stakes debut here in the grade three Indiana Derby. Yeah, I don't know. The, uh, uh, certainly could be the favorite. Eight to five seems a little short to me when you uh, also talk about uh, Stronghold, but we sh shall see. Uh, so I guess a lot of that morning line is the fact that he's coming from the barn of Brad Cox and uh, that Florent Giroux is coming in to ride, and that combination is always dangerous. Uh, uh, this year, uh, sporting some pretty uh, impressive uh, 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 results. He started his career with a second in a maiden special way, but that came against a very good horse that had showed a lot of promise earlier uh, in the year named Otto the Conqueror, who went on to win uh, his next race. And then Dragoon Guard came back and won a maiden special weight at Keeneland, which we know is always a tough thing to do in the spring meet. And he came right back with a big allowance win for uh, uh, Brad Cox at Churchill Downs, certainly the up and comer in this field. Yeah, yeah, we we talked uh, well about Stronghold, and and I, I do like Stronghold, but Dragoon Guard, you just don't know how good he is. I mean, you've seen so many good horses go through the Brad Cox barn in the last uh, half dozen years or so. Dragoon Guard has the potential to be another one. He's the son of Arrogate. Uh, like you said, yeah, good debut. His only two-year-old race, he was second by a neck to a stakes winner. Um, this year, two easy wins. Uh, the Beard, seven furlong course, a little bit longer than seven furlongs at Keeneland. One easy in his maiden. And then he came back. Uh, the last one was a mile at Churchill. It was it was a solid time, easy win. It was on a sloppy track. So uh, this will be a fast track. We expect at uh, Horseshoe Indianapolis on Saturday. And he, he is moving up in class quite a bit for a horse with low odds on the morning line. But uh, Dragoon Guard, Certainly an interesting one. I want to take this opportunity, Matt, to uh, remind everyone, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do that now for us. Leave us a comment, turn on those notifications, like the video, all of that. That sure helps Matt and I out. Last week, by the way, Matt, we talked about uh, some races at Churchill Downs and Kings Barnes. We got to go hats off. If I was wearing a hat, it would be off right now. Kings Barnes was a, a, a nice winner of that grade one, Stephen Foster, and really took a step forward. What did you think of that performance? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kings Barnes has it was been a one of those horses. Yeah, he's one of those horses that has shown so much promise throughout his career and has been a little bit up and down, but he was way up for Todd Pletcher uh, uh, in uh, the Stephen Foster. We'll see if he can keep it rolling. Yeah, Kings Barnes, uh, Pleasure has some uh, good-looking uh, horses in the older division, including Bright Future, who recently won the Salvatore Mile. So Pleasure uh, could be gearing up for a, a classic one with both of those. All right, Matt, we talked about the Indian Derby. Let's go to the race before. This is a stakes-laden card at Horseshoe Indianapolis on Saturday. Uh, but the last two are the biggest two. And, and the race before the Indiana Derby, this would be race 11. 
is the grade three Indiana Oaks, also a mile 16th on the main track there. And we got a field of eight again. And uh, this one, um, I think, I, I, I think there's a more legitimate, clear favorite in this one for Brad Cox than perhaps the Indiana Derby. Um, not that Dragoon Guard isn't legitimate, but I don't know if he'll be a heavy favorite over Stronghold. I expect the seven in here, Impel, to be a pretty heavy favorite. But but let's start with the rail out, Matt. And and one is my long shot in here. One is Charlene's Dream. And Charlene's Dream is uh, brought to us by uh, Ed Moger Jr. And, and he, of course, uh, is of Stiletto Boy fame, Matt. This is a Texas bred. Uh, she is uh, a, an interesting filly because she was very good last year in San Francisco, Northern California, Golden Gate. She was a stakes winner going a mile on turf. She was a stakes winner sprinting on the main track there at Golden Gate. Of course, we are losing Golden Gate Fields, which is a, a sad state of affairs. But uh, Charlene Stream was a nice two-year-old. She came back in a tough spot, honestly, a, a sprint stake at Churchill Downs. She was fourth. She had a little trouble early. She prompted the pace. But I think Charlene Stream really could move forward in her second start of the year. Yeah, I agree with you, Brian. And that 15, 15 to 1 on the morning light odds might be a little on the high side. But no doubt uh, Charlene's dream will be a good price and certainly can be considered a live long shot. Yeah, a live long shot who I think will show speed. And there's not a whole lot of speed. We're going to talk about the pace a little bit uh, uh, soon here. Number two is actually a great at stakes winner. Her name is uh, Chapalis, Chatalis, Ch Chapalis. Oh, I love announce, uh, pronouncing uh, tough names. But anyway, she's a great two winner. She won the Chandelier last fall. I don't know it was a great field that she beat in the Chandelier last year, Matt. But uh, that, that was a nice win for a filly who will uh, be uh, making her first start of the year in the Indian Oaks. She'll be also making her first start for a new barn. Tell me how you pronounce it, yeah. first of all. Yeah, I, I guess I would go with Chattelis, uh, So, but uh, um, but I, I'm, I'm not absolutely positive. But yeah, uh, not an easy spot to come back in to make your uh, your debut for of 2024. But yeah, you know, ran some uh, Ran some pretty good races uh, last year, uh, winning that chandelier uh, stakes at a uh, grade two at Santa Anita, going to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies where, you know, uh, she didn't do much running, finishing finishing ninth, but came back to run fourth in the Starlet, uh, another grade two, uh, at try and tried the turf at Santa Anita and finished second, so showing some versatility. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, what she can do off the layoff. Yes, Chitalis is a daughter of Gunrunner, and if she comes back uh, running her first start, fresh for the new barn, Grant Forster, as I, as I mentioned, this is her first start for the Forster barn. Uh, she's a threat, and she also has a little bit of speed as well. Uh, but like you said, tough spot for the first start of the year. Number three is Just Be Quiet, Matt. This is the local horse, uh, a daughter of Carrick and Ty. Uh, the uh, Breeders' Cup Mile winner of uh, about a decade ago. Uh, Just Be Quiet has been running really well locally, uh, but those are uh, allowance races at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Uh, I, I don't know that she can carry over that good form against graded stakes competition. Performances lately locally are good enough to at least take a look at Be Quiet. Yeah, absolutely. Two wins out of the last uh, last three races and uh, a second in the in the other start as of late uh, but yeah it's a big it's a big step up to 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 run in this grade 3 Indiana Oaks uh but yeah uh, in really good form yeah and i i guess the next horse the next filly in this Indiana Derby field is all Indiana Oaks field excuse me is also in really good form because she's undefeated now Rusty Arnold has an undefeated daughter of Arrogate Arrogate of course i mentioned the star of Dragoon Guard he's also got Neon Icon in here and i think Neon Icon is going to get that and uh uh she'll she'll be in my eyes she's going to be the second choice in here Matt even though she's making her stakes debut and only her third career start. Neon Icon, 
uh, interestingly, uh, didn't start running until April, and it was allowance race at Keeneland, mile 16, or Mount Maiden race at Keeneland, mile 16. She won that nicely. She came back in an allowance race at Churchill. This is the interesting part. It was a mile and a quarter, um, uh, taking a page out of Batten Down, who uh, won the Ohio Derby off a mile and a quarter race at Churchill Downs as well. She won that nicely as well. I will say, though, that both of those races were kind of small fields. Yeah, exactly what I was going to add to uh, the rundown of the past performances with Neon Icon. Uh, yeah, it was a five-length victory in that allowance at Churchill Downs, but it was a small field, as was uh, the uh, the race at Keeneland, and, and that's always uh, that's always a factor that's important for me when I'm looking at past performances. But you know, hasn't done anything wrong thus far. Yeah, she could be a good one, but what does she face so far as, as opposed to what she'll see here Saturday up uh, up uh, just outside of Indianapolis? I'm not sure why the five is in the field, Matt. Um, Dancing Pr Princess to be ridden by Hannah Leahy. Leahy excuse me. Uh, Dancing Princess was uh, a five-time starter as a two-year-old and, and remains a maiden. Now she'll make her stakes debut in the Indiana Oaks. Sure, why not? Sure, why not? Every, every bit of 30 to 1 deserved on on this filly. Yeah, 30 to 1. Uh, if she's 30 to 1, don't bet her. If she's 90 to 1, don't bet her. If she's if she's <laughs> triple digits, don't bet her. I guess this is what Matt and I are saying. Just just don't bet her. Uh, uh, next on the list, Matt, let's throw up the time form US pace projector here as well. Uh, number uh, six on the list is a, is a filly that we expect to be at the back of the field. If not last, oh, she'll probably be last early. Uh, you see her and Neon Icon. And, and those are the two that will probably be the second and third choice here in the Indiana Oaks. Of course, I'm speaking of Band of Gold. Band of Gold is a stakes winner, a daughter of preservationist, Matt, for trainer Kenny McPeak. She won two of her first three starts, including the Martha Washington at Oakland Park. Unfortunately, she's uh, lost uh, four in a row since against good competition. Decent third last time in the Monomoy girl at Churchill Downs. But um, I, I don't know if she's run back to that nice performance in the Martha Washington. And I don't know if she's quite graded stakes. Um, if, if she's a filly, we're going to see a bunch of graded stakes uh, wins from. Yeah, uh, you certainly can't be encouraged by what we have seen as of late from Band of Gold. And, and as you had mentioned, the pace projector before, seeing Band of Gold at the uh, at the back of the pack here and noticing that the pace projector says there is not going to be very much fast early pace in that in this race. That's what that favors horses on or near the lead, early lead really means. Uh, um, it means a slow pace, which is going to make it even harder for if for Band of Gold, should she be ready to run a better race, to do it from the back of the pack in a paceless race. Yeah, I'm not going to buy paceless completely. Uh, yeah, we see the time form U.S. pace projector saying a pretty slow pace and an easy lead for the favorite Impel. I think there might be a little bit more pace than that, but Impel certainly looks to have the advantage from a pace uh, perspective over the second and third choice, uh, Neon Icon and Band of Gold, who are back of the pace. Uh, one of the reasons I'm saying I think there will be more pace is number two, the graded stakes winner, Chitalis, is fresh, and she's got some speed. I, I, I don't think she'll be too far out of it, and I do think Charlene's Dream is going to show some pace from the ra uh, rail here. So I, I don't think it will be quite as easy as they're saying at time form U.S. But certainly in Powell is the Philly to Matt. Um, she won her first two races in style, did the Daughter of Quality Road. There's that trainer again, Florent, uh, excuse me, Brad Cox and the jockey Florent Charou. Won her first two races in absolute style. She's raced against very good Phillies in her last two. She uh, uh, battled. on the lead and 
a grade one Ashland and hang, hung around for third. Then she shortened up for Bells and was second best, but she raced very good fillies in both of those. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, those were those were very good fields. So not only does it appear that uh, Impel has a bit of a, a a pace advantage in this field that she may be able to control the race uh, out front, she's got a tremendous class advantage also. Yeah, it looks like she has a tremendous class advantage off those two races that she's run again, third in the Ashland, second in the eight bells and uh i you know i think there's some interesting fillies in here neon icon charlene stream but uh impel seems to have everything going for her in this indiana oaks number eight is little jamie she'll be blinkers off not daughter of collected bobby medina she's only won one out of eight and now she makes her stakes debut yeah blinkers come off last time uh, she was third in an allowance at Churchill Downs after having the lead. Again, this is a tough spot for uh, little Jamie. Yeah, she looks like a long shot. Maybe not a dancing princess type of long shot, but a long shot in here. All right, Matt, it's time to make our top picks for this uh, big day at uh, Horseshoe Indianapolis. I'll let you go first. Let's do the Indiana Derby first. Indiana Derby, uh, yeah, I, like I said during the rundown of the race, uh, Stronghold is legitimately the horse to beat. Uh, with the races that uh, uh, he's run thus far, uh, certainly gives him a, 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 an advantage class-wise. You mentioned the way he has been training as of late. Certainly the horse to beat. Uh, um, I don't think we'll get 7-2 to on this one. I think... Uh, 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 He'll, he will be lower in odds. I'm going to lean towards the newcomer. Uh, this is the kind of field where I just get that feeling where uh, uh, I, I like I like a new horse. I like the fresh horse. Um, and that would be on the outside, Dragoon Guard. Uh, certainly don't like the 8 to 5 on the morning line, but I think we both agree that uh, uh, Dragoon Guard and Stronghold will be, will be closer to uh, odds of each other. So I'm going to go with Brad Cox and Dragoon Guard. Yeah, I, I do think he'll be the favorite. He just has those typical things that uh, betters love to bet, Brad Cox and and, and up and coming. Um, and I, I like Stronghold better. I honestly do. I think Stronghold is a very good three-year-old. Uh, we saw how consistent he is. We saw him go to different tracks, like the workout since the Kentucky Derby. He ran a good Kentucky Derby, finished ahead of 13 horses in the Kentucky Derby. Stronghold for me, EJ won the cup. I tell you what, it is a horse I'll definitely use as well in the Indian Derby. He's he's a nice horse who's um, run consistently well at two turns dragoon guard i just need to see more and as the favorite i can't i can't go with them in the indiana derby in the indiana oaks matt I, i'm going to apologize now we're we're not um uh going to go as far as our top pick with odds yeah i i think we agree on uh, the indiana oaks uh just just too much of a class advantage uh against this field a very nice horse uh who's shown some versatility at this point. Again, it's Brad Cox, and 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 that's going to mean short odds, but I think this is legitimately uh, uh, the favorite and legitimately the horse to beat. Yeah, no, I, I think this is Impulse Race, and unlike Dragoon Guard for me, uh, she's proven herself at class. I said I needed to see more Dragoon Guard, even though Impella has not won a stakes race yet. She will. She is a very, very talented three-year-old filly, and I think this spot is kind of ideal for her. Charlene Stream, though, uh, my long, my my bomber, 15 to 1 on the morning line. Uh, I'll try to get her in there a little bit as well. All right, Matt, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend, as we uh, uh, say uh, say good night to this episode. Say, say good night to this episode of Horse Center. Yeah, good racing uh, f with uh, the 4th of July on Thursday. A lot of tracks have some good stakes races on Thursday, as well as the weekend, uh, as we showed at Indiana Derby. Good racing uh, at uh, uh, in New York at Aqueduct also. So enjoy yourself. Have a happy and safe 4th of July. And thanks for watching the show.
Yeah, happy 4th of July. Good racing at Iowa as well on uh, uh, this weekend, the holiday weekend out there at uh, Prairie Meadows. Uh, Friday, next, and Krupe in the Brooklyn. That has my interest in a mile three-eighths uh, edition of the Brooklyn this year. Uh, I also want to thank, of course, our friend in the home office, Candace Curtis, for the race graphics that she provides us all the time. We appreciate it, Candace. Derby Wars, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. And of course, Time Form US for the pace projections. Most of all, thank you for watching Horse Center each and every week. We sure do enjoy doing the show for you. Again, subscribe, comments, thumbs up, turn on those notifications. We love it here at Horse Center. We'll be back next week with more big races. Until then, good luck.